Hi, I'm Steve from the All Electric family, and today we have our 2013 Tesla Model S. This thing has 208,000 miles on it. We purchased this knowing that there would be some maintenance to go along with it. What's happening is the rear is starting to come out underneath it when you accelerate. It's usually above speeds of about 40 miles an hour. So I'm just gonna go through the whole rear suspension on this. We also have an airbag leak in there. And so we've gotten the airbags for it and we're just gonna replace all that. Now I kind of thought getting some OE replacement parts would be a bit difficult, but it's actually fairly easy. Evan X, I reached out to them and they sent us all the parts. They're super easy to work with. Got them fairly quickly. There was a couple that were on back order, but it didn't really take too much time at all. So I do appreciate them sending me the parts. I'll put links to all that stuff down below so you guys know where to go to get those OE replacement parts. But let's get this thing jacked up, get the rear tires off of it and get started. An important thing with these Teslas is to make sure and have a puck for jacking it up. It just inserts right into the place where you're supposed to jack, a jack point, and then you can put your floor jack or your scissor jack, whatever type of jack you have on it. You just clip it in there and then you're able to put your jack right on that and good to go. Just make sure before you jack it up, you also put it in jack mode. That's the other thing. So go ahead and get this wheel off and then start tearing things apart. All right, so I took the parking brake off. I was two bolts, I had to put some PB Buster on that. But so I probably got one, two, three, four, five, I think. Five more bolts to take out. Not too bad of a job. The toughest thing was that park brake, to be honest. Those bolts were on there very well. Like I said, had to put some PB Buster on it. Let's see if it, oh, I gotta take this off too. We will continue pushing on and see how much I can get done. And kind of doing this in spurts. We got the rotor removed there. And one of the control arms, this one here, the bolt, butts right into, I believe the chassis. And so you'd have to drop the subframe if you wanted to salvage that bolt. And maybe I should. I haven't figured that out if I'm gonna do that yet. That's as far as I've gotten so far. And then I just need to get all that stuff taken off and then should be able to start putting stuff back on. I am getting things tidied up here. I am not, I have never really worked on suspension stuff. I'm more worked on like gas engines and stuff like that. So for me to get all this stuff out of here and put back in, it took a little bit longer than I anticipated, but nothing that somebody can't figure out. You just have to be resourceful in finding the right threads or knowing somebody with a service manual, that sort of thing. One of the biggest things that I had to figure out was before you torque all these bolts down, you had to get the ride height to the standard ride height. So figuring that out was a bit difficult, but it did find that you could jack this up and then have this I don't remember the specs, but roughly a little over three inches, something like that. Don't use that, go find that. But so you had it jacked up to where that measurement was correct from here up to there. Then you torqued it down to spec all the different bolts. And so it was a little bit more difficult. Obviously I still got the parking brake to get up there. I did have to drop the subframe before. They also do want it on four point jack. So I did have to borrow some jack stands uh, from my father-in-law. Thanks, Gary. Finally getting stuff tidied up here. Still take a little bit to get the wheel well cover under there, but I do have everything on both sides. I did not die there. Just have to put the brake back on. Then I'll need Katie's assistance to get the parking brake back on and tidy this up, find out where all the clips go, everything, and then should be able to 
put the tires back on and figure that out. One thing I did find when doing this is a nail <laughs> or something in the tire. So I'm sure once I remove that, I'm gonna have to fill that hole, but that shouldn't be too difficult. All right, so we're going to take this thing out and see how it runs after doing all that suspension work. So let's get going. One thing I noticed right off the bat is that there's no squeaks, rattles, clicks, anything like that. So there maybe is a little bit more going on back there than I anticipated. And then the biggest thing is when we press on the accelerator, it is not shifting that rear end out from underneath you to the right side or even when you are regening, it's not pulling you to the left. So just fix that problem. Their suspension came up right where it was supposed to. We do not have the air suspension light coming back on, at least at this point. So everything seems to be running as it should. Now I will have to get it aligned, so I will take that in, but I'm thinking of upgrading wheels and tires on this. So if you think that's a good idea, let me know. There are plenty of companies out there that have some aftermarket wheels for this Model S and I think they would look good. If you are looking for some after, if you're looking for some after, I do want to thank Evan X for sending me the parts that I needed for this car. I'm sure I'll be reaching out to them to get some more because this car does have 200, over 200,000 miles on it and we'll need some more maintenance going on here. If you are looking to do any sort of suspension work, brake work, anything like that, I would suggest you to check out Evan X and see if they have the products that you need. But let me know if you guys have any questions about anything that I did, any sort of tips needed or anything like that, let me know. I'll try to comment down below with any of the answers, but we'll see you on the next one, guys.